When I listen to Raymond Scott's music, I really can see the 20th century's DNA kind of unpacked. <laughs> Prophet is uh, not without honor except in his own country. He was before his time in his music and his thinking. He was always experimenting, always. He was totally unique. I don't hear in his music it coming from anywhere. He was not only the Frank Zappa of his time, he was also, in some ways, an audio version of Andy Warhol. The top seven songs of the week with Raymond Scott and the Hit Parade Orchestra. That's my father. In the 1950s, when I was about 10, he was the orchestra leader on that show, Your Hit Parade. He had become really famous in the 1930s with a group called the Raymond Scott Quintet. The quintet was extremely popular, literally overnight sensations. They debuted in late 1936 on CBS radio, and the audience reaction was stunning. Within six months, they were out in Hollywood, appearing in films, making lots of recordings. In the 1940s, Warner Brothers began licensing his music for use in their cartoons. I used to tape Roadrunner cartoons from the TV because they didn't have very much dialogue on them and you would hear like... The drummer makes tick-tock sounds and then a whole new tempo and feel starts. This, the middle section of Powerhouse, could have been a piece on its own. That's the one that everyone associates yeah. and recognizes immediately. Scott and others created music that was not Russian, was not Jewish, it was quintessentially American. When I wrote things, I was kind of thinking, what haven't I done yet? And I would always try to do something else. Putting notes together is fun. He was different, very different, and he sort of became a boyfriend. And then we didn't have a wedding, we just eloped. And he, he didn't want children. He didn't think he'd be able to handle it but we had children. But he never spent that much time with them. If he was around, if he was in our house, he wasn't really engaged with us. He was doing his, his music thing. I remember thinking when my mother told us that she and my father were getting a divorce, it isn't gonna make a lot of difference because he hasn't been around much lately anyhow. And it didn't. At least that's what I thought at the time. A while after divorcing my mother, my father married his protege, the young woman who had lived in our house and practically been his stepdaughter. She was a singer, and her name was Dorothy Collins. He brought her with him to the hit parade, where she soon became known as America's Sweetheart. While I was at the hit parade, my father developed the idea of pre-recording the orchestra and playing it back during the live performances, something that's common today. <laughs> This is a man who loved equipment, loved technology, and was working with equipment and technology early in his life, and then kind of got steered towards working with musicians, and then later on in life managed to go back to working with machines where he had greater control. What fascinated me was the scope of his studio and how he could change that equipment in ways that no one else had ever thought of doing. He goes over the electronium and he starts playing with this thing and this flood of sound comes out. And I'm thinking, holy cow, this is nothing like what anybody else is doing. This thing would create music. You would flip a bunch of switches and this device would compose. There was a period where there's no doubt he had developed the most sophisticated equipment in the world. They all came and they all looked and they all listened to the electronium and then Barry Gordy ordered one. And at some point Gordy said, look, I'd like you to work for Motown. I want you to be head of electronic research and development. It's very rare that you have like a combination of someone who is both a composer and technically skilled enough to make the machinery. Can you imagine Mozart making a violin? He refers to the electronium, he said, it's really a cockpit of dreams. And, and this is it. If you have this in your, in your house, you're like Jean-Luc Picard on the Starship Enterprise. <laughs> I would never go out. He was a true artist in a sense. He didn't want to let it go, it was always I'm going to make it a little better, I'm going to change this, I'm going to add that, and it was never finished. 
I guess it's the creative process which is most enjoyable. I could go on just experimenting and inventing and trying things for the rest of my life, just for the pure joy of uh, making up things.